Hi both, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to speak to you. How are you both doing? All good, all good. Um, so first things first, how does it feel to be getting back on stage after, I don't even know how many months, about a year and a half of, you know, <laughs> complete shutdown. It must be an amazing feeling to get back to the stage and back to audiences. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. And, and, and also it was the lead up to it as well. You know, the, the rehearsal period and just meeting um, new cast members and get, you know, and, and old cast members as well after such a long time. You know, it was just like such a build of, of anticipation, you know, and, um, and like you said, you know, just that long period of time not doing what we love to do. Oh my gosh, you just start realizing just how, how precious it actually is. And then actually just to hit the stage in front of a live audience. Oh my gosh, it was, it was so overwhelming, I tell you. Yeah, to, to reiterate what Sean said, you know, being starved of, you know, being, having that audience performer relationship, being in an auditorium, sharing stories. Um, you know, for me, uh, you know, there is nothing like the live experience of theater. So to be coming back to it and to be coming back to this show, I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's been an unreal feeling throughout rehearsals. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Sean, it's just mm -hmm. been absolutely magical. And, you know, I went to the theatre the other day for the first time yet, yeah, probably about two years. And it did feel like it wasn't just returning to how it was before. There was a kind of different feeling in the audience, like such an appreciation, everyone hanging off every word. And so do you think there's also kind of that added layer to it? And even thinking about the story of The Lion King, do you think it might hit in a different way than pre-pandemic? Because of, you know, the cathartic nature of following that journey um, perhaps hits people more in a different way than it did before. Absolutely. I think, you know, certain lyrics definitely like it ring completely differently having come mm. back to the show. Well, so I wasn't in the show pre-pandemic, but, you know, now in this, you know, in this version of the show, listening to um, the lyrics and listening to what they now mean, you know, I, you know, I sing um, the sun will rise, the sun you know, I know that the night must end. I know that the sun will rise and I'll feel this voice deep inside, you know, this long night that we've had away from theater, away from each other, um, mm -hmm. to, to come back and sing those words, which meant something to me personally beforehand, but now they, they mean so much to, to so many people. You mm. know? Very true, very true. And I think what it is as well is that um, everyone, you know, the, the audience have been starved of, you know, theater and entertainment. And there's a, a different kind of gratitude. There's a different type of appreciation for the arts, you know? And like you said, you know, it's not just, you know, we're starved of so many different things, but, you know, music and acting and performance, and it kind of resonates with the soul. And it, we were starved of that, you know? And, and that's what I mean, the audience was starved of that. And it's just a different appreciation. It's, we, we really feel the love. <laughs> <laughs> feel the love to like, you see what I did there? You see what I did? <laughs> <laughs> see how many uh, song titles you can get in. Uh, and, and, and for you guys personally, what was it about The Lion King as a show, as a musical, that made you want to be involved with it originally? I mean, was it, you know, going back, you know, having watched the, uh, the Disney animation as a kid? Was it seeing the show yourselves? Like, what was it that made you want to, to, to star in this incredible musical? Oh, gosh, I mean, where do we start, Kai? Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, you know, it's it's the storyline. It's it's the music, the iconic songs. It's the it's the costumes. It's the the spirituality, uh, the the characters. It's it just goes beyond. I mean, you know, each year, you know, that I've been in the show, it's it's a different kind of thing that kind of hits me. You know, that I'm like, gosh, I'm so great. You know, it's just so lucky to be in this performance. So lucky to be part of this. You know, it means so much to, you know, and so many different things to different people, you know, and it kind of just resonates a, across all different age groups from a young child to grandparents. Everyone's getting something from it, you know. So for me, like you said, it's just, it was a storyline. It's the father son relationship. It's the spirituality and it's the music, it's the harmonies. There's a, there's an earthiness and a spirituality to it that kind of just, resonates with me and I, I just I love it I absolutely love it mm -hmm. 
I came into the show, um, obviously I'm, I'm new to the show, um, but I grew up watching The Lion King on VHS over and over and over again. <laughs> like my mum would try to wrest it from my hands. That's how much I used to watch it. <laughs> um, and I, you know, when, when it eventually came to the West End, I, I was like, oh my gosh, my, you know, my favorite film is now a West End musical. And I remember the first time I went to see it, actually, unfortunately it was like way past, you know, when it opened on the West End. But the first time I went to see it and I was like, oh my gosh, the amount of theatrical elements, the, mm -hmm. the music, the music of the show, the, you know, just the, the passion and the groundbreaking, you know, innovation that was mm -hmm. in the show that I witnessed. I was like, I need to be in the show in some way, shape or form. <laughs> and I remember coming to my first mask fitting and I was sitting with the guys from Puppets and they turned to me and said, you know, every puppet has a different texture. Um, so the, the level of detail that is in the show goes down to the texture of the actual puppets themselves. And I was like, th there is just something on every single layer to be explored, to be enjoyed. And I was like, I, you know, I'm, I just feel so blessed to be mm. part of it. And do you think it's some of those elements that has meant this musical, like the stage version, has had such longevity? Because, of course, we know there's been many um, films that they've tried to put on the stage, things they've tried to put on the stage to film, and it doesn't always work, or something gets lost, or it doesn't have quite the same magic. But they seem to take something that was already fantastic with Elton John's um, songwriting and et cetera, mm -hmm. but they did make it something new. And it is this new creation and they have added so many elements that, you know, specifically for the stage. So do you think that's what may has meant so many millions of people over the world have wanted to see it? Yeah, of, of course, of course. And you know, and the thing is as well, you know, for people that haven't seen the show, you know, as soon as it starts, it draws you in. You feel part of the performance. It's no longer an um, audience and an artist on stage. It becomes one, you know, and, and I think with the liking, it's quite a unique thing. You know, it's very unique. It becomes like a, a dual kind of performance. The audience feel like they're part of the story. You know, and I think that's the magic as well. It's, it's something that Lion King does and it's quite unique in itself, you know? Mm -hmm. It's also the, the blend of so many theatrical conventions from such an international like wealth of techniques. Mm. You know, there's there's um, stuff from Balinese dance through to um, you know Japanese puppetry. It's there's there is so much. So yeah, I mean, even being part of the show, every time I, I look up, there's something else that I've missed. You know, if, mm. you can't see the show once because you only have you know one set of eyes. <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> I think what contributes to its success is that there is every, sing every single time you come back, there is something else that catches your eye and you go, oh my gosh, I had no idea, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, re it reminds me, oh, sorry. Sorry, carry on. No, it just kind of just reminded me of a, a story of a lady, she came to see the show and, um, and I've said this a few times, but she came to see the show, came backstage, the stage door, bar crying her eyes out. And, um, you know, so, I, you know, we, we came down and I was like, oh, gosh, this shoot, you know, obviously <clears throat> the performance wasn't that good today. <laughs> and she's crying her eyes out. And she said um, something quite profound. She said, um, you know, I'm gutted that I'll never get to see that for the first time ever again. And that's oh. just the Lion King in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. You know, and, I, I, you know, like Kai was saying, you know, there's always these new elements and these new things. And it's always, it kind of blows our minds all the time, to be fair. But because it's, it's something that's always organic, it's, it seems, seems like it's alive and it's always growing, it's always expanding, you know, it's, it's quite a wonderful thing. And you know, the stage and theatre is not really known for its diversity, particularly mainstream theatre. So do you think there's also something incredible about this show that it does celebrate lots of different cultures, African music, African culture, and also, you know, gives roles to a lot of, uh, of non-white actors, uh, actors of colour? Mm -hmm that other shows just feels like progress is very, very slow on that front in terms of diversity and representation. So is that something else that's quite important about this show really in mainstream theatre? I think, um, you know, with The Lion King, the way it was conceived, obviously, you know, it's, it's from Africa and, and everything else and the, the, the kind of the resonance and the thread is, is African mm -hmm. and the spirituality. But what I love in its conception that um, Julie Taymor, she said, right, I'm just gonna kind of mesh all of these beautiful cultures together 
you know, and so naturally, of course, that draws in different cultures from, you know, we have Brazilians, we have Japanese, we have Chinese, we have, oh gosh, who else, Kai? We've got, you know, all these different uh, cultures. Melting pot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so, yeah. so basically, so, so naturally from its conception, it draws in different cultures, you know, and, and you know, so Julie Taymor in herself was just far ahead of the curve, <laughs> far ahead. <laughs> And I think, you know, in, in that, you know, you've got um, such a diverse um, show in itself, like in, in, in terms of its inception, it, it's such a diverse show within itself. It brings in, as you said, Sean, such a diverse cast to, to tell yeah. the story with such authenticity. But then also through that, you end up with an audience that sees themselves represented. So the, yeah. the audience, when I look out and I see such a multicultural audience, it mm. warms my heart every single day yeah. because yeah. there's something literally on that stage, again, like from the ground up, as I said, um, for literally everyone. Yeah, and just really straight what um, Kai said as well, just, and that's what makes it so beautiful. It's the mixture of all of these cultures coming together and making something absolutely beautiful. And I yes. think, and that's the power of it. That's the power, you know, we're just coming together, we're just doing our thing and it's wonderful. Yeah. And I was also going to ask about, like, of course, you know, the uh, live action, if you call live action, the remake of it. But you had like, you know, Beyonce had Childish Gambino. Like, how do you think that could have, I don't know, brought in new audiences to the story, which might have obviously attract people to the musical, but maybe influenced as well, like playing these characters. Now you've had these kind of other people come in and, and, and give their version in their voiceovers and things. Mm. Hi. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say when you have um when you have people with such um international acclaim coming forward to tell again this this very same story, you know, um we have Janique who plays Nala. Obviously, you know, in the film you had Beyonce who played Nala, I play Simba, um, and it was it Danny Dan, Danny Glover Danny played, yeah. um, played Simba, you know, and he's got his um, various followings from like, you know, Childish Gambino and all of the music that he creates. So all of a sudden you have this story being opened up to so many more people who may not have even thought, oh, let me have a look at The Lion King, do you know what I mean? I mean, it's it's a, I think, you know, it was really wonderful to see and to experience that show having a rebirth as it would be on the big screen. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well said, well said. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, if you were going to say that there was like a favourite moment for you or, you know, a moment of the story or a song that, you know, you find that touches you every time, every time you sing it, or every time you perform, would there be one you could pick? I mean, I, I think every time I rewatch the, the story, like the Mufasa bit, um, you know, it's just you can't help but feel emotional, even if you've seen it a million times before. But you know, it's just <laughs> the best moment or, or the most touching moment for you. Yeah, oh gosh, the most touching moment. <laughs> oh man, so you know, so now that you've, you've kind of rephrased it that way, I've got a favorite moment, and the, but I, I do have a, a touching moment. And, and mm. for me, it's um, when in the show, it's when Kai is singing his song, you know, you, you know, and he's you know, singing these words, you know, you'd promised you'd be there, and there's this anguish and this thing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm alone, you know, but I know you're there, but I need to find you, and I, I need to find who I am, and that gets me every time when it comes to a touching moment you know and you know so emotionally that always gets me and especially how Kai sings it he just he smashes it I'm not saying because you're here that there you know that I've got, you know, but he, he absolutely smashes it every time and you know and but my and one of my favorite parts is, is the opening sequence of the show because it just first of all for myself it kind of uplifts me regardless of what kind of mood I'm in but also I know that it's slaying the audience you know, because every time, you know, mouth's wide open, I see tears, I see all sorts of emotion. So, you know, for so, so two different reasons, the, the beginning and, and Kai's song gets me all the time. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sean. No, no man. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, for me, in terms of a moment that really touches me while I'm doing it, and again, I'm not saying this because you're here, Sean, but it is definitely the moment where because something that Simba says the whole way through, or one of his main things throughout the show is, you know, I just want one word from my dad, one word. Mm -hmm. And when Sean says Simba, when I'm underneath the stars with, you know, the, the, the mask of Mufasa having come together, but, you know, that 
hits me so deep because you know we've all loved and lost you know family members mm. etc and especially through this period we've just been through mm. um you know everybody has lost something whether it be your job whether it be you know friends family etc um so to finally get that moment where you know hope all of a sudden hope blooms mm. on the horizon um I think that moment, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think that that moment really gets, you know, in that moment, there is complete silence in the audience. It, it is such a, a tender moment on such a massive scale. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it blows my mind. In, and in terms of a moment that I'm not part of, um, I, I mean, I'm always having my makeup done it during this moment. But again, Sean, <laughs> listening to you sing, he lives oh, with mate. You. You know, it's uh, it's a masterclass. It's a vocal oh, masterclass. <laughs> um, but also, again, you know that that um, sort of that father son teaching moment. You know, because the song breaks up into sections where he talks to young Simba, who is me as well, um, and you know he, he imparts this advice, this you know that parental guidance. So yeah, it's yeah, uh, beautiful. <laughs> And you might have already answered it, but, you know, in just kind of what do you think is the takeaway message from the film? And, you know, why is it that, you know, people should come and see it? Because I think even when you when I used to watch the films, it, you know, when I was slightly older, I was like, God, this isn't really a kid's film. It's kind of you know, it's quite hard. hitting. <laughs> There's lots of, you know, big themes in there. It's, it really does take you on a journey. But what do you hope that people will take away and what would be the message for you? Gosh, um, hope, hope definitely. And obviously the story is about the you know, prodigal son finding yourself, finding your place, you know, within, you know, within, in life or, you know, or the circle of life. Um, and, and family, you know, just how important family is and that no matter what you are loved, you know, so mm -hmm. that's the kind of things that I think people definitely take away, you know, no matter what you are loved, you know, so, yeah. I mean, I can only applaud that because that is exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could, couldn't say it better myself. And, you know, uh, uh, how are you feeling about doing a whole more, you know, the run of these shows, you know, like, have you, do you think you've got your stamina back after having such a long break? Does it feel quite exhausting? I mean, I'm always in awe of people that can perform something <laughs> night after night, but like, how are you feeling about getting, getting back into it? Or is it just such a joy to be back working on the stage that you don't mind the, the hard work? You know, during lockdown, I ate so much banana bread. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so to come back, <laughs> to come back to theatre and start rehearsals for this show, like towards the end of, um, you know, the last lockdown period, I was taking myself running. I got myself up to doing 10K and there was no amount of physical stamina that could have prepared me for what this show is. Um, mm -hmm. But again, it's, you know, the, the stamina is coming back. Um, we're all getting back into the swing of it, but I look around the room, you know, when I feel like I've got nothing left to give and I see all of these incredible artists giving 110% and, you know, dancers doing backflips, people singing, even though they didn't necessarily have a voice that day. And I was, and I'm like, you know, what, what is my excuse really? You know, I can, I can always give more. I need to, all of us rise to a level every single day that, you know, maybe some days we didn't think was possible. And I think that's just the camaraderie and the tenacity of, you know, the theatrical spirit in each of us. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, adding a little smidgen to that because it's just <laughs> completely covered the whole thing, but it, it, exactly that. And also, you know, we have responsibility. You know, a lot of the audience are coming for the first time, you know, and so and we take, you know, as much as we, we maybe don't take ourselves very seriously, we definitely take the art seriously mm -hmm. and we take the show seriously and we always want the audience to, you know, especially if they come to this for the first time to have a real experience of the Lion King and the Lion King family, you know, mm -hmm. you know, because we love what we do. We love it. We love the people in the cast. We love, you know, the whole thing. So we want that to resonate, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Well, I think I'm out of time, but it's been such a pleasure yeah. to speak to you both. And oh. even though I've seen the show before, I'm definitely going to have to come back and see it now. <laughs> you've absolutely <laughs> sold it to me. Um, and yeah, best of luck with this run of shows. And yeah, thank, thank you so you. much for taking the time to speak to us. Thank you very thank much. You so much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely to speak to you. Thanks. Bye.